Synopsis. Starting out, we have our heroes tired after a long day of working, wanting to go relax by the pool for a bit before heading off to the bed. But sadly, the pool is being used for a commercial starring Lightning the Wonder Dog, so the boys are escorted by security to the lobby. However, they can't stay there because it's off limits after 9 p.m. They go up to their apartment, but as it would seem, it really isn't the best place to relax. The boys quickly head back downstairs to ask to upgrade their apartment, especially since everyone else in the Palm Woods has an incredibly fancy living space. The manager, Mr. Bitters, tries to convince them they have nothing to upgrade for, seeing as their apartment was host to several now famous celebrities, including Lindsay Lohan, Shia LaBeouf, and Kanye West. They request if they can at least remodel, but Mr. Bitters strikes back by saying it's not part of their lease. But he does let slip that the real reason they can't upgrade is that all he sees when he looks at them is four hockey-playing hooligans. They all get sprayed by a burst pipe, thinking of a way that they can maybe get a new crib. And luckily the next day at work, the marketing team basically hands it to them. Turns out the person that owns their parent company wants to dump the music division. So to convince them not to, they have to shoot a promotional video in a mock apartment. Each of the items in the apartment being something produced by the parent company. Basically, they're doing a huge product placement, which helps everyone out involved. Gustavo initially tries to stand his ground and says Griffin can't come in here just whenever he wants, but as we saw from the pilot, Griffin is the king of power moves. He says they have two days to finish the video and walks out. Kelly initially tries to get everything prepared as fast as possible, but Gustavo says he's going to do it all himself and they're going to do it here in the studio. And seeing as the boys just realize that they're building their dream apartment, they start to form a plan to build it in theirs instead. Logan tries to sway them off of it, but clearly he hasn't learned. Kendall always has a plan. They rush downstairs and, wait a second, like clockwork, Camille is there and slaps Kendall across the face. They ask for her help and sure enough she's able to convince them to build it in apartment 2J instead of Rock Records. They're even prepared enough to give the construction crew a fake number, and when they call it, they call Logan doing a pretty spot on impression. Okay, I need to touch my llama now, Mike. Accurate. They're all pumped seeing as phase one of their plan is done, but Logan is still pessimistic. Everyone treats him as if he's underestimating Kendall, which is just even more proof that he is new to the friend group. Same writer and everything, so I'm calling it canon at this point. Camille makes it pretty obvious she has a crush on Logan, but then Logan brings up a pretty valid statement. He asks what they're going to do about his mom. I mean, I personally don't see it as a problem, because she'd probably be on board for people re-renovating her crappy apartment. But apparently she's going to be gone at about that time anyway, so it all works out. Seeing as Kendall's plan has worked so far, Logan asks what's next, and Kendall replies with, How should I know? This plan should not have worked. They all discuss it together and realize Gustavo is going to be an obstacle. So they get Katie to drop a plan for them. Wait, how'd she get that whiteboard? <coughs> Keeping Mr. Bitters in mind, she tells them to keep him distracted. And the way to deal with Gustavo is just as simple as getting him to shoot the interviews by the pool, like the dog food commercial the other night. Oh, that came back from the start. I mean, Griffin did ask for the interviews to be near water, so it kind of works out perfectly. Back at Rock Records, Gustavo's created a laughably bad set. Kelly tries to call him out on it, but sure enough, Gustavo just yells and bullies their boss. The boys walk in, tell them to shoot the video by the pool, and while Gustavo initially says he doesn't take orders from the dogs, eventually he caves in after wrecking his own set. And lucky for all of us, the location fee that they have to pay is enough to get Mr. Bitters to go into his office in delight. Kelly checks in with Gustavo and tries to call him out on being, well, a dick, let's be fair. But he simply responds with, I'm not a dick, they're just idiots. I really should hate this guy, but... Kelly checks in at the office, but is kept out by Camille, Carlos, and Katie. She just offers to get them coffee and she's gonna come back later. Meanwhile, Logan and Kendall are help getting the set ready for the apartment. They get one of the Jennifers to pose as the manager, and while Logan is still against the idea, something tells me it's a little late, buddy. Back at the pool, James is having a hard time saying he loves their parent company, seeing as their hair dryers ignore ionized technology. What does that mean? I don't know. Gustavo lets us know that they've been here for two hours, and then when James sneaks on a bandana, he begins to chase him down. Back with Kendall and Logan, they receive a call from the set designer. They let them know the room is too small, and to keep building, they'd have to completely destroy the ceiling. Kendall tries to mime to Logan to call it off, but Logan takes Kendall's advice and decides to take a little risk. Something tells me it's a little late, buddy. The noise causes Mr. Bitters to go up and check. Luckily, they're able to get the Jennifers to say a fridge fell on them, meaning the plan is still a go. Back at the studio, though, the batteries run out in the tool they're using, giving Kelly enough time to go and check. But can I just say, I'm surprised she has the patience to sit there for two hours? I mean, I guess I would too if my boss was paying me to just sit down and do nothing, but hey, I mean, that's just me. Using cartoons as a frame of logic, Carlos nails the doors closed, which I should probably call out, but seeing as this show can feel a little cartoony at times, I feel I should let it go. Back in the Palm Woods, Kendall and Logan are dragged out to the pool by Gustavo leading to Kendall telling James it's a code red, which James takes as a, Oh my god, I love this episode. 
As a bandana-themed superhero, James rushes up to his apartment. And James is able to scare Mr. Bitters enough to hide in the supply closet. At the studio, though, Kelly finally breaks through, and that's when they realize it's too late. She calls Gustavo, and sure enough, the room is already finished. The boys got what they want. The room is theirs. They film the video, and... Oh, that's messed up. Gustavo does give them a compliment, but all the guys do feel defeated, as their hard work was all for naught. The next day, they all watch the video and are given the company approval. They all celebrate, and Griffin even gives some words of endearment to Gustavo, before treating him like a dog. Oh, that makes sense now. The boys try to appeal to Gustavo, but he still decides to give them 10 hours of non-stop work. They get home, and the apartment is back to the way it was for the video? Gustavo reveals he did this as a way to tell them he actually cares and he's proud of them. They all have a loving moment until... Bitters is ready to throw them out, but Kelly writes him a check and all is forgiven. Thoughts. I'm starting to see a pattern here. I've reviewed three episodes so far, and the two I've liked just so happen to be written by the creator, Scott Fellows. I definitely really like looking at the writers and directors for each episode. It's definitely a really cool way to rewatch the series, and I want to keep going with it. Anyway, the actual episode. What's not to love here? The episode is not only meant to further the relationship between the boys and Gustavo, but also establishes a new status quo for the series, seeing as this apartment stays like this for the rest of the show. The humor in this episode was really well done, even better than Big Time Audition, which incredible considering I already gave that one the highest rating. Some nice continuity with the first episode, with Logan, like I said, seeming like he's a new addition to the friend group. It definitely seems like all of them have done a plan like this before, but this is Logan's first time doing it. I could be wrong about this whole Logan is new to the group thing, but until there's something in the show that disproves this, or the creator actually confirms it on Twitter himself, I'm going to keep finding evidence. I actually really appreciate that they weren't going to give the boys the room initially, as sets are built and destroyed in random locations all the time. That's just part of the film industry. Just like how filmmakers rent cameras, not own them. James' first appearance as Bandana Man is also pretty sweet. I wasn't expecting it this early into the series. Definitely made me audibly scream of excitement when I was watching it. And Gustavo. I said this during the episode, I should hate him. He's controlling, he's manipulative, he yells way too much. But seeing how Griffin treats him like a dog all the time, I definitely think there's something to it. At first, I thought he called the boys dogs because of his quote, I can teach a dog how to sing, or I can teach a dog to be a pop star, or whatever it is. But I like how this episode shows that there's more to it with Griffin treating him that exact way. Don't get me wrong, no one should ever treat people the way that he does. But I think that's the point, as I think we're going to see more of his character evolve over time, and I think we're going to see him become a better person by the time the series is over. And if we don't, that's on the later part of the series, not this episode. I guess only time will tell, but for now, this episode gets a diamond record. Trivia. Yes, this may actually be James's first appearance as Bandana Man, but did you know that there's actually two more appearances throughout the series? There's one more in Season 1 and one in Season 2. Hopefully they're just as amazing as this one. Secondly, a bit of trivia I could have said in Episode 1, but decided to save it for this one, you know, with good reason considering there was no trivia for this episode other than just mess-ups, is that the Palm Woods is actually based on a real-world hotel called the Oakwoods. It was shut down in 2019, but before it was, it was actually home to a bunch of child stars, including Hilary Duff, Jennifer Love Hewitt, and Neil Patrick Harris. Kind of a shame a piece of history was shut down, but all it takes is one Google search to realize, eh, this place is kind of shady. While I did have to do some digging to find this trivia myself, I should credit my sources. I got most of this information from the Big Time Rush fan wiki, specifically the blog Big Time Crib and The Palm Woods. If you want to fact check me, feel free to do so in the comments below, and if it's a big enough slip up on my part, I'll try and have your comment penned, assuming I haven't already done that to someone else. Well, there you go. We got to see a little bit of their home life, and the series is indeed looking up. So, I'm excited to see where the series is going to go from here. I just hope it's not bad. When the window blew out, I fell, cut myself. As the blood spilled, I was helpless, nearly killed. Your actions, they did curse me, and yet your lies still hurt me. One heart for hoping.